never dreamed of blasting off into space or ever wondered how satellites help us right here on Earth. Well, I'm here in Manchester for the UK Space Conference, where astronauts, scientists and even robots are coming together to shape the future of space exploration. There's a lot going on here, from cutting-edge satellites that monitor climate change to the next generation of British astronauts. The UK space sector is now worth over £454 billion a year and supports around 55,000 jobs. So, I'm here to find out how the UK space industry is playing a growing role in exploring the final frontier and to learn what the future holds. My first stop is meeting some of the people behind the missions, starting with Britain's most famous astronaut, Tim Peake. What we're seeing at the moment is the cost of getting to space coming down dramatically. When I was selected as an astronaut, it would cost nearly $60,000 to get one kilogram into low Earth orbit. Today we can do that for $1,500, and with Starship, this new rocket could be as cheap as three to $400. We can now start thinking about doing big things in space, like building things in space. So really exciting times ahead. With everything happening in the world, do you think space exploration should still be a priority in the UK and other countries? What we're doing in space is really cutting edge technology. So we're doing some really exciting research where we're starting to print out bits of human organs using a 3D printer, which is amazing to think that in the future, maybe in 10 years time, we can take stem cells from a patient print their own heart out in space, bring it back for a transplant, and space could help to solve our energy problems. We can get clean, limitless solar power from space and beam it down to Earth. Do you think we'll see humans living and working on Mars within your lifetime? Yes. Now, it might be that it starts off quite small, maybe 10, 15 scientists working in a research laboratory somewhere on Mars. And then gradually, I think we'll see those research bases and laboratories grow into small communities. And there is UK tech on display here that could be used on Mars as soon as 2028 to help explore the planet in more detail. What is the mission for this rover? The main purpose of the mission is that it's got a drill that's going to go two meters underground and look for past and present life on Mars. How fast is the rover drive along the surface? That's a great question. It actually goes about two centimeters per second. Over the course of the mission, it's going to go about four kilometers. The ExoMars rover is just one example of the cutting-edge tech on display here, pushing the boundaries of science. And I met someone who knows all about pushing boundaries, John McFall, the world's first astronaut candidate with a physical disability. John, you're training to be the first astronaut with a physical disability. How does that feel? Proud, I think. I find it very interesting exploring the requirements to be an astronaut uh, and still do exactly the same as everyone else but happen to have a physical disability. It's the world's first is what we're doing, so I'm super proud to be a very small part of that. What are you most excited for when it comes to the future of space? Would well, you know what? I'm going to keep my, my focus relatively short for this one uh, and keep it in the next sort of 10 to 15 years or so. And I'm super excited to see humans and Europeans, I hope, getting onto the moon. Some of the space tech here is helping us tackle climate change. I met with UK reserve astronaut McGann Christian to find out more. Space is one of the best things that we have for actually monitoring the status of the planet. And basically that's from a lot of different satellites that are orbiting the Earth and they're picking up different kinds of values like ocean temperatures, sea levels, the amount of carbon that's captured by our forests. And all of these are giving us information about the health of the planet. Your training as a reserve astronaut, what does that involve day to day? Well, we all come from really different backgrounds. Some of us are scientists, some are engineers, some are doctors and some are pilots. And so the basic training is to get us all up to the same level across a lot of different fields because astronauts have to be able to do a lot of different things. As well as all the brand new space equipment on display here, there is also something much older, actual meteorites. So this has come from a big event, something maybe similar to the event that created our solar system. So. This has happened billions of years ago and is likely, as a piece of solid material, older than the Earth. You are now going to hold a piece of Mars in your hand. This is a Martian meteorite, so not many people get to touch a piece of Mars. But I think it would be a good idea 
if you were to take that little piece there home with you. Thank so you. There you go. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. What a day it's been. And whether it's training astronauts, building satellites, or developing space robots, the UK is playing a bigger role in space exploration than you might think. And who knows, maybe one day it could be you, or even me up there.